hello, hello, guys. This is your girl, Najwa. Thank you for being back to my channel. Please do me a favor. Go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you always know when I post videos. So today, I want to talk about Harry and Meghan and just some opinions that I have. Um, this video doesn't really have too much of a structure. Et salut tout le monde to my French viewers. Um... Yeah, this video won't have too much of a structure. I'm going to post more of an update of what I've been seeing um, a little bit later that's a little bit more structured. Here's why. Okay, let me break it down. Let me break it down. Um, so, I have been wanting to post a video for a little while about how Harry and Meghan are so resilient because we see how resilient they are just based on the hate that just keeps getting thrown their way by people who really... I mean, it should be more professional than this. You, f you would feel like the monarchy, you know, the democracy of an entire nation would be a bit more <laughs> tactful than this. Like, if you want to look at the video from uh, James O'Brien from, from LBC, which I love. It's almost like a British version of NPR. Um, but he, he basically does the scenario of what the headlines would look like. You guys saw that. You guys probably saw that. But for those of you who have not seen it, it's on LBC. Just go on YouTube, search it. And it's a video from about three or four days ago, I think, where James O'Brien basically does a scenario of what the headlines would look like if the roles were reversed. Because right now, all the headlines in the tabloids are trashing Harry and Meghan and making Charles, you know, William, Camilla... Kate look really, really good. So, um, yeah, you would think that, that uh, uh, you know, a professional space, an institution would be a little bit more um, professional than that, but that's not the case. So I have been wanting to do a video about how I find Harry and Meghan so resilient. Um, I keep wanting to say malgré. I, I don't know why I want to speak in French, but I'm losing my words. Um, even against the odds, you know, how they've been so resilient, even against all odds. And, um, I've been wanting to do that video for like two weeks now. And it's so difficult because every time I see something that I'm just like, oh my God, they are so resilient. They're awesome. They, they make an, another accomplishment despite all of this hate. So that just shows you like, you cannot keep them down. So, um, yeah, um, I'm going to do that. It's probably going to be seven or eight reasons why Harry and Meghan are so resilient. I, I'm still working on all the reasons because there's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, they are so resilient. I'm so proud of them. Like, they have accomplished so much, you know, and despite everything that, that they've gone through. Anyway, um, just a little bit of updates on me before we get into Harry and Meghan. So this weekend, we had a really cool date. Picture here of date. <laughs> um, we also, um, so the thing about this is that um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Catholic. And um, it was a very, very long road to get me to the Catholic Church. A very long road to get me to the church, period. So you look at my name, Najwa, and you're probably like, that's a Muslim-sounding name. Well, it's because I was raised Muslim. Um, and I was not raised Muslim by immigrants, you know, you know, Middle Eastern or anything, immigrants or African immigrants in America. My parents are just regular old Americans, really. Um, and I come from generations of Christians, but in the seventies, you know, my parents were into, uh, black power, black love, you know, black Panthers, uh, Farrakhan, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, and they converted to Islam. And, um, you know, even up until the time that my dad died, he was a very devout Muslim. I mean, no pork, no drinking, none of that. Read the Quran every day, did the five prayers a day. Um, he even uh, taught as an imam, you know, at the masjid, for those of you who know what that means. And, um, you know, I had grown up around my grandma, and she would just, I told this in another video, if you want to go and see more of my backstory, because I won't go into everything now, um, there's a video I to post about, um, you know, an atheist being married to a Catholic, Catholic being married to an atheist. If you want to see more of my backstory, you can see it there, but... Basically, I had grown up around my grandma, and I had seen her love for our Savior, for Jesus Christ. And I just always remember, 
looking at her and seeing that love and that devotion in her and from a very young age I just never felt that connection with Islam but you know the person that I am today is because of Islam and really my dad and my mom sort of their um, emphasis for us to read the Quran I just remember waking up you know with sleepy eyes really young at five o'clock in the morning for Sahur right before um, you know, Eid prayer and stuff and reading the Quran and, and, you know, analyzing different parts of the Quran together with my dad. And so forever I will just have um, this connection with the Muslim community despite having converted to a different religion because I find so many parallels between the Quran and the Bible, you know. And so that is why that reason is that I cannot see people behaving the way that they're behaving towards Harry and Meghan and claim any sort of faith. I, you know, whether they are Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, um, Taoist, Jewish, you know, anybody who would criticize two people who said, we experience hate, racism, sexism, xenophobia, and people got nothing for that. They say, oh, you're a liar, you know, you, 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 you're a narcissist, Any, anybody who says that, I really cannot see how you can call yourself a person of faith. Now, my faith is Catholicism, so I did think about a little bit of a, a biblical verse, if I can share with you guys today. Um, because, actually, what was so funny was in church, the priest talked about Luke chapter 9. So, it's Luke chapter 9, basically. And, um, for those of you who don't know, okay, so, first of all, Charles basically put out in the news, I don't know if it was Charles, but we can assume that it was Charles, put out in the news that um, he was evicting Harry and Meghan from Frogmore Cottage, okay? That was the case. He's evicting Harry and Meghan from Frogmore Cottage. And um, we know that they put 2.3 million pounds into renovating this, you know, in comparison to Wiz Windsor Castle, in comparison to Buckingham Palace, you know, in comparison to all of these stately homes that the Crown owns. It's not that big. It's not that glamorous. And we know that there is a reason why the spare and his, <laughs> his black wife and his mixed kids are just like, yeah, okay, y'all can have that. We know that there is a reason for that, and that reason is institutional racism, which people have been denying from the very beginning. And I found it really ironic that the priest talked about this. Um, and, and stay with me. I know I'm getting to a roundabout way to get here, but stay, just stay with me. So um, it was like God. It was like God was kind of speaking to me through this verse, through the priest, when he kind of talked about Luke chapter nine, because. It talks about the transfiguration. It talks about, um, well, I'll get to that. So basically, let's get back to Charles. So they put out this information that Frogmore Cottage is being, uh, they're being evicted out of that. So let's just think about the context of this, because I have said continuously in my videos, I don't see how people can call themselves a person of faith and especially not call them a person who is Christian or follower of Christ and treat Harry and Meghan the way that A, the, the hateful UK tabloid media have treated them, B, their own family, including both on the royal and on the US side for uh, Meghan's family, have treated them, and the way that the hateful trolls have treated them. I cannot see how you can be A, a person of any kind of faith, you know, or B, a, a follower of Christ and, 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 and have that type of stance. So. What, when we think about Christ, when we think about being Christ-like, what are those components, you know? It is healing those who need to be healed. It is clothing those who need to be clothed. It's housing those who need to be housed. Taking, you know, doctrine out of it. Although the Bible has a reverence for authority, the Bible is very clear on when right is right. If someone is hungry, you feed that hungry person. If someone is needing clothing, you clothe that person. If someone is needing shelter, you shelter that person. And very clearly, Harry and Meghan, since, arguably since the beginning, okay, arguably since 2016, but really since 2020, they have definitely been saying, family, we need you. On both sides, we need you. Okay, we face death threats because we called out racism and xenophobia. We've lost our respect among many circles 
because we called out hate, you know, because we called out hate. The same thing that Christ would do, he would call out hate. And I'm not comparing Harry and Meghan to Christ because I don't want to see any more memes with, you know, Meghan with the halo on her head or a crown on their head. You know, they're not trying to take over the monarchy. They're not trying to make themselves all as Christ-like or anything. They're trying to tap into your common humanity and to your common good and to your empathy. Because we live in a day and age where it is so, like, praised to be alternative culture, to be counterculture, to be hateful. And empathy and love and compassion has been trumped. I mean, huh, doo -doo trumped. <laughs> but it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, so basically in Luke chapter 9, Jesus is on the mountain with James, uh, Peter, and... John, I believe, he's with the disciples and they are basically teaching, you know, they're 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 teaching the masses. And let me just clarify, it's Peter, John and James. Yes. So they're on the mountain and Peter uh Jesus is with his disciples and um I'm going to go I'm going to I'm going to actually read a, a, an excerpt from you for you before we get to Harry and Megan and what I think they should do because I think it's connected. But just the backstory is this is that they're on the mountain. There's at least 50 people there. And Jesus, I think 50 people, 50 or 500. I'm sorry, don't quote me on that. And Jesus is basically teaching. He's doing his teachings. And, you know, it's getting late. And Jesus is like, well, we probably should feed these people and get them to their homes. Frogmore Cottage. Ugh. Okay, anyway. Jesus is like, we should probably feed these people and get them to their homes. So, the disciples say, well, we've only got five loaves of bread, and we've only got two fish. How are we going to feed all of these people? We don't really have any money. Like, how are we going to do this? And so, Jesus basically said, give, give me those baskets. Give me those baskets. And he starts to just break apart these pieces and, you know, distribute it to the people. And lo and behold, before you know it, Jesus has fed all of these people and there's still baskets of food left. So that right there shows the miracles that Jesus can do. But beyond the miracle aspect of it, you know, there's a lot of people who really can't wrap their head around the fact that Jesus did miracles. And, um, <laughs> you know, I've had these talks with my mom, too, because my mom and my grandma, they basically come from a loose version of bap baptism. I mean, it's it's my granddad was a deacon. Um, in a little small country church in the place where I was born in Birmingham, Alabama. I grew up in Atlanta, but I, I was born in Birmingham. And um, it's a small little community, and so it's not um, exactly baptism. It's kind of one of those, you know, America was really crazy during the, the, Civil, the Civil War and the Revolution. Lots of Christian sects kind of spun out from Quakerism, from, uh, from evangelism, from, from, from Catholicism, you know, whatever. So it's basically just like a small church, but it's, it's basically Baptist, if you want to call it. And, um, you know, Catholics, it's, it's a whole other thing. Like, I can't even get into it. It's, it's a thing. But they're much more um, based around the fact that, that you know, the, the, they're much more based around the New Testament, around... Um, you know, the, the, the blood and the bread of Christ, the blood and the body of Christ, um, then, then the evangelicals or the Protestants, I would say, are. And so it's a different thing, but it, it's a big thing, at least for the Catholics, this, this idea of transfiguration, you know, Jesus taking on a form and figure that is bigger than himself. And I feel like a lot of atheists, even my husband who's atheist, they really can't move past this magical I guess realm that they people who are very analytical sort of I mean but they're analytical Christians but people who really can't wrap their head around it they can't they can't understand it um but if you move past that and you get to just the basic teachings of Christ it's just about doing the right thing <laughs> it is as simple as that it's just about doing the right thing it's just about giving love to those who need to be loved clothing those who need to be clothed, feeding those who need to be fed, sheltering those who need to be sheltered, despite 
um, what anyone says. And so the fact that you have two people who said, we received death threats. And when we're in the UK, people are really unhinged. And all this hate that's been incited from the UK tabloid media that's very closely linked to the institution that we were a part of, or are a part of, or a part of, are a part of, whatever, um, it's causing us danger. It's causing us threats to our security. And what is the Crown's response to remove the only home on the Crown's grounds that they have? The, the only home where they really have the amount of security that the Crown can provide? So now they have to pay for their own security like they've been doing for a very long time. We saw that when they took their security away. So two people come to you and they tell you, we've experienced hate because you guys haven't renounced racism or xenophobia. And so people are taking this narrative that we're bad people and it's getting violent. And your response is to take someone's security and their home away. So I thought that that was really, really interesting to see um, Luke chapter 9 where Jesus is basically feeding and providing shelter to the needy and to see basically what's happening with Frogmore Cottage. So I'm going to read this verse to you and then um, I'm going to wrap this up and basically tell you what I think Harry and Meghan should do. So um, Luke verses, uh, chapter 9 verses 20 through 26. So, but what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? This is from Jesus. Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And he must be killed. And on the third day, be raised to life by the guy by the way guys happy second weekend of lent happy second second week of lent uh we're getting closer and closer to spring closer and closer to easter and so that just goes to show you with harry and megan all situations you know we are emerging out of a darkness with bright blooming colors bright blooming flowers and things they always transform and take a different form so happy lent um i continue and i digress then he said to them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily, take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. I'm sorry that I keep stopping, but I have to stop there. You know, the, the behavior that I see from the, the, the senior royals, really says to me that they are consistently throwing Harry and Meghan under the bus to save face, to save face for themselves. You know, look at that James O'Brien clip, really do look at it. You know, it's like they are, you know, making Harry and Meghan look like atrocious people just to make themselves look a bit better, you know? Meanwhile, ignoring kind of what faith, what Christ would demand them to do, even if it's not Christ, even if it's another faith, any kind of faith, you know, most faith exist on the doctrine. Hinduism, I mean, I've read the Bhagavad Gita, like, they're, they're based on the fact that you should do the right thing, you know, you should do what is morally sound, you should help people and have compassion for people. Um, and they are not, you know, doing things, you know, Christ says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever does, whoever loses their life for me will save it. That is basically this whole point of, you know, if you're selfless, I mean, if you want to take Christ out of it, just people who are selfless, we often look at them as um, revolutionaries as visionaries these are the people who make us change the way we see things people who are selfish yeah they might get a leg up but they might have some dire consequences in terms of if you if you're of faith or not karma 
of retribution, of judgment facing them. They might have more dire circumstances waiting. And that is what I see of the, the firm, the crown. Um, you know, the, the crown doesn't have to just disappear into oblivion. Um, I'm really, really interested to sort of do that video about the resilience of Harry and Meghan because I also have some st statistics for you guys about how since Brexit has happened, since Megxit has happened, um, the decline of approval of the monarchy has, I mean, the, the approval of the monarchy has declined drastically. I, and I have numbers for you drastically among young people so maybe the older bigoted people and the karens are still trashing you know harry and Meghan, thinking that that's good for the monarchy when it's actually the exact opposite but this has dire circumstances because of selfishness now what would have been the christ-like thing to do it would have been to renounce hate xenophobia just like Sweden did, just like Norway did. It would have been to put out a statement a very, very long time ago that says that they renounce any forms of hate or prejudice or violence. And we see with the coronation people declining those, those invites, you know, and people who are avid monarchists or slash. They put in the comments, oh, this happens all the time. That's just showbiz. People drop out. Come on, guys, get real. If Queen Elizabeth would have asked people to come and perform, they would have come and perform because she had a warmth about her. She had a selflessness about her. Okay, I digress and I continue. Whoever is ashamed of me, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory. And in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Okay, so I will leave the Bible at that, you know. I, I bet the um, the naysayers who are watching this video, they're like, get to the point. Get to the point so I can buzz in your comments with a bunch of hate. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> okay, time for me to get to the point. Um, in my opinion, guys, and Sussex Squad... In general, I don't have exactly the same opinion as the Sussex Squad. Even though I'm in high support of Harry and Meghan, I've also lived in the UK, and I also think living in the US and growing up in the Bible Belt when, you know, being around lots of far-right sort of mentalities, um, I just don't think it's as easy as saying that we need to strip out the monarchy. I've been very, very clear on that, and... Um, you know, it is what it is, but I think that Harry and Meghan can and have make, they, they, they can make and they have made their own differences, their own marks in the world, and they've made the world a better place without the monarchy. And so um, we are sitting around waiting for the powers that be to do the right thing, to renounce hate, to renounce uh, racism, to renounce xenophobia, to renounce sexism um to do the right thing to, to stick up for these two people who are victims you know they have basically plunged us deeper into this victim blaming society that we live in and we've been we've been holding with bated breath guys for six years for them to do the right thing and you know seeing those statistics about the 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 decline in support of the monarchy amongst young people, amongst 18 to 24 year olds, the people who will be carrying the torch very, very soon. It's very dire to look at. Um, I said in another video, I know that the people who are the naysayers who probably have links to the decision makers within, you know, the royal news tabloid circles, within the monarchy, if this is your call of action to speak up, I know something in you tells you that this is not right. It's your call of action to speak up. Go back to the powers that be and tell them to release that statement. We can say that, and we've been hoping for that for six, seven years now. And it has not happened. Harry and Meghan have garnered international success, okay? They left the UK 
And they have kind of left the UK in an unspoken level of disgrace. You know, the, the, the people of the UK really don't support Harry and Meghan, and they go off on their soapbox on these hate campaigns against Harry and Meghan, and it just makes them look, I mean, it's making the UK look absolutely ridiculous, especially with all the economic problems that they're having. Basically, my point is to say is I don't think there's much hope there for the UK to do the right thing. I've come to that opinion, and, and maybe they will do it, but I don't necessarily think it's going to happen in this generation. You know, maybe it'll happen with Louis' generation, you know, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really seeing it happen, and let me just make sure that I quoted that right, because... William's children, they, Louis is, no, George, I'm sorry. Louis is the, Louis is the spare. George. You know, maybe that'll happen with George's generation. I don't, I don't foresee it because, um, but you know what? You know what? Harry really got Diana's sweet and beautiful nature, you know, and so maybe George could be the one to kind of get that nature too. Maybe he'll be the one who inherits that that sweet Spencer nature. But um, hopefully, at some point along the generations, because I, I really don't see the monarchy just disappearing. I mean, it is definitely entrenched in everything that is the United Kingdom, and it does bring some positives. This circus that we're seeing. This is not the positive. Um, but I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening in, in anytime soon. I don't see... It's like they've dug the, their heels in. They see that what they're doing is wrong, but they're, they're so deep in the trenches. Like, if you guys ever watch that show, My So-Called Life, you know, when Claire Danes is having that dream about Jared Leto's character, and she's like, she's yelling at him, and he's she's just trying to fight him and punch him and stuff and he's just like he doesn't see her he's walking away he's not looking he doesn't even know that she's there she doesn't even know that she exists that's kind of how harry and megan are they're like please listen to me please we're trying to tell you the right thing and the monarch is just like not there and she's like you ever had that dream and it's like you're so wet from the storm that you don't even care about getting wet anymore I feel like that's basically where we are. And so I feel like Harry and Meghan, they have graduated to another class. They have graduated to a class of amazing, beautiful advocates um, that are making a change in the world. Screw the silly monarchy. They've moved past that. They've graduated past that. And that is why the monarchy is so intimidated by them building their own little, you know, court in, in the U.S., which is just silly. They're not building... The, the U.S. isn't a monarchy. Like, the U R. The, that's why they haven't garnered all of this craziness in the U.S. is because, you know, we have the ability to make up our mind on our own. Um, so, I think they've graduated that, and I think that they should just renounce their titles. I know that that sucks his squad. I know where we are coming from. I know where we're saying that's their birthright, and they deserve it. And you would be right to say that. That is... Harry, Meghan, Archie, and Lilibet Diana's birthright, those titles, and I would agree with you. But right now, what we read in Luke chapter 9, you know, the fight to do what's right, to be selfless, is so much more important than the circus. So I feel like the UK is never going to do what it needs to do. They should go ahead and give up those titles and never, ever look back. They should... Well, they should continue to advocate. They should continue to tell their story and be a voice for the, the marginalized. And they should continue to tell what happened to them. Absolutely. Their entire life. They can make money on it and I will <laughs> applaud them. But I think it's time to just leave that behind. It's time to just leave the nastiness of what happened in the UK behind. Because clearly the UK is not ready to do what's right. And... Despite them going to being, you know, knowing, uh, despite us knowing that they're going to have dire implications for not doing what's right, the UK, I mean, you know, that's tomorrow's problem. 
today's problem is keeping Harry and Meghan safe. Now that's my first thought, that they should just renounce their titles. My second thought is that they should not go to the coronation. They should not go to the coronation. These people have consistently proven that they don't care about Harry and Meghan. They don't care about their safety. They don't care about the causes that they're trying to speak up for. So I think that they should really just leave it behind. Um, Sussex Squad, I know you're going to be like, oh my god, Nashua, why'd you drop it like that? We don't like that. But I mean, we, we, like my mom says, an opinion's like a butthole, okay? We all got one. <laughs> so I am not saying by any means that my opinion is the, the end all and be all. Like, guys, I'm not saying that that's the end of it. It's just one droplet in a sea. It's just my opinion. Um, but I would love, love, love to know what you guys think. So let me know. Um, also, please do me a favor, like and subscribe. Click the bell so you know whenever I post a video, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay.